So in the previous video, we saw uh, an introduction to eigenvalues and eigenvectors uh, through the reintroduction of invariant lines. And we want to see um, a better method of how that's going to work, uh, which I will detail in this video here. Before I do that, and before we look at the proof of method of this, um, I want to introduce some notation that is attributed to eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Okay, so let's say uh, for the matrix M, okay, then we say that if it has invariant lines and M represents a linear transformation, um, then so for the matrix M, um, it has eigenvectors uh, which we will identify as V. So you can have v1, v2, and v3, okay, underlined, of course, because they're vectors, with corresponding eigenvalues, which are represented by the Greek letter lambda, and that would be lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. So lambda 1 goes with v1, lambda 2 goes with v2, lambda 3 goes with v3, okay? Now, what is important here is that your eigenvectors are non-zero, okay? Um, if an eigenvector was zero, what that would mean is that uh, your points would be being mapped to the origin. And now, remember, an eigenvector is representing an invariant line, okay? Um, that doesn't really make any sense if the points are going to the origin. Okay, so eigenvectors are non-zero. Okay. Now the idea then is that if you are applying your matrix M to a point which is on one of your invariant lines, okay, so we can say that we're applying it to one of our eigenvectors. I'm just going to use uh, V here without V1, V2, V3, okay. If you do that, if you apply matrix M to a point that is on one of your invariant lines, then what's going to happen is that that point will remain on the invariant line, okay? So we'll still get uh, V, but it's going to move along that line. And we've recognized from the previous video that that's given by lambda, by that eigenvalue, okay? So that eigenvalue might be 2, it might be minus 2, it might be 3, whatever. OK, but it will multiply along. Now, that eigenvalue as well won't be zero. OK, uh, otherwise it would be bringing all the points to the origin. So, um, uh, oh well, unless it was, uh, sorry, if it was bringing all the points on that line to the origin. OK, so um, we can say then that MV is equal to lambda times V. Now, uh, with that in mind, um, what I can then say is, OK, well, I'd like to rearrange that into another form. And I'm going to first of all recognize that lambda times v is the same as lambda times the identity matrix times v. Now, you might not be too happy with that. Um, initially. So I'll, I'll give you an example. So let's say uh, lambda uh, was 2. Uh, so let's say we had 2 times our vector v, and that was 1, 3. Okay, then I know that that is uh, 2 times 1 and 2 times 3. Now if I've got 2, that's the lambda, remember, times by the identity matrix, and then we're multiplying it by the 1, 3. Then we're going to have 2 times the identity matrix is 2, 0, 0, 2, times by 1, 3, which is going to be 2, 0 times 1, 3, which is 2, and 0, 2 times 1, 3, which is 6. Okay, so these two things are the same. Okay, and now and you can um, bring in and use lambda and 
a b if you like if you want to generalize it lambda a lambda b lambda a b this will be lambda lambda a b lambda a lambda b okay and so these two things are the same right so once i've convinced you of that okay you can then think about rearranging this if you were to subtract uh, lambda iv from both sides and then factorize it you would be able to write this in the form of m take away lambda i times v is equal to zero okay now this is the important bit here right remember that your eigenvector cannot be equal to the zero vector okay so if that is the case then that means that the m take away lambda i has got to be equal to zero okay now let's be clear on what this is right let's uh, because here when you're looking at it it looks very um, convoluted because m here is representing a matrix v is representing a vector so it looks absolutely horrible so let's think about uh, m as the matrix a b c d e f g h i okay and of course lambda times i is just going to be so lambda times i is lambda zero 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 lambda zero 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 lambda okay and v is going to be our eigenvector x y z okay so if you've got m take away lambda i times x y z okay what you've got here is a take away lambda b c d e take away lambda f g h i take away lambda and that's multiplying with x y z is equal to zero the zero vector okay now if you want to multiply this matrix by the x y z you would get a take away lambda times x plus b y plus c z equals zero you would get d x plus e take away lambda y plus f z equals zero and g x plus h y plus i take away lambda z equals zero so this here is saying the same thing as this these three equations here now these three equations okay notice how you don't have uh, any extra constant terms here they're all equal to zero okay now if you were to then say okay well um what are the solutions to these three equations okay these represent three planes in three-dimensional space okay now the only values um the only uh, point that all three uh, planes can go through okay is the origin okay now that's the only unique point for these three planes to satisfy now why would that be the case okay well if this is your mate let's say that this is matrix a and you've got your vector v and we know that that's equal to zero okay if you pre-multiply both sides by the inverse matrix of a then you would get v is equal to a inverse times the zero vector now if this is the case right then the in the uh, vector v is going to be equal to the zero vector because this matrix times zero is going to be the zero vector which we cannot have okay 
So the only way that this can work to have a unique point is if x, y, and z are all equal to 0, which we cannot have, OK? Because that would mean our eigenvector is 0. So the only way this can work is if the determinant of this matrix is 0, OK? So we don't have a unique solution. Now, if that is the case, right, if the, if the determinant of this matrix cannot, um, oh, sorry, if the determinant of this matrix has to be equal to 0, then what we've arrived at is that the consequence of writing this down is that the determinant of m take away lambda i must be equal to 0. OK, this equation that you get here is referred to as the characteristic, characteristic equation. OK, what it will give you is an equation in lambda, OK, which will allow you to then solve the equation and get your values of lambda through that way. So if you had a 3 by 3 matrix, right, and you took away lambda i, and you worked out the determinant of that matrix, put it equal to 0, that could give you a cubic equation, for example. Solve that cubic equation, and you will have your three eigenvalues. Once you've got your eigenvalues, we'll be able to work out the eigenvectors. OK, so this is the idea, OK? That's our proof of method for 3D, as I showed there, OK? So what we're going to be using in the following examples is this method in order to work out the eigenvalues, and then I'll show you how we can use that to then work out the eigenvectors.